guys, it's Sam and this is my spoiler free review of The Falconer Trilogy by Elizabeth May. This trilogy consists of The Falconer, The Vanishing Throne, and The Fallen Kingdom. This is a young adult fantasy series that I have described as Buffy the Vampire Slayer in Scotland with Faye. In the first book, our main character, Eliana, who is a young woman in society, her mother was murdered by a fae, which is almost like a vampiric fae, a few years previously. And since then, that kind of activated her powers of the falconer, which means that she has additional abilities to be able to fight the fae. And she has been working with a another fae, actually, Kieran, who has trained her and who has helped her to hunt the bloodthirsty fae who want to kill humans. She's one of the only people that can see fae. She's one of the people that can defeat fae, everything like that. So the first book reveals a lot of things about how the Fae world have interfered with this world and how Aeliana is the key in a lot of Fae dynamics and everything kind of goes from there throughout the series. Obviously, since it's a spoiler free review, I can't go into the other two books. This is a series that is, I would say, underhyped but also has kind of a cult following. So I went into this series with pretty high expectations and I don't think it quite met them but I do think there are some things within this series that a lot of other people would like. So let's talk about all that. First let me talk about the world building. This is I believe 1800s Scotland and it has that vibe. It's set mostly in Edinburgh and then it has this like steampunk element. It's never fully fleshed out throughout the story but Eliana makes like weapons that are very steampunky. There are like med kit things that are very steampunky and things like that. So we have this steampunk element which is most prevalent I would say in the first book and then we have like the fey and the fey magic. If you're really into fey stories I think this is like you need to pick this up. This is very traditional kind of fey. You have the different kinds of fey. You have the seely court and the unseely and all that traditional fey stuff as well as some like Celtic gods and things that pop in as well. Is this the most fully fleshed out world built series? No, it's very much based on, again, the standard Celia and Celia, some of that stuff, but ultimately I think if you like Faye you're gonna really like that dynamic. Next I'm gonna talk about our characters. Our main character Eliana, I do think ultimately I liked throughout the series. She sometimes does some things that are like a little bit frustrating because she's a, it, you know, it's a young adult series and she doesn't sometimes have like the wherewithal to realize some of the emotional things going on around her, but overall I did like her and again because it feels like Buffy with Faye, there's these elements of just like her being a huge badass and like tons of action sequences and things like that that really pull the story along. As far as some other characters, there is a decent mix between human characters that she's had from her like previous life before she became a falconer, as well as some like fae and things. Her best friend, I would say her best fae friend, is a pixie who lives in her closet and is kind of the comedic relief and he's very wonderful. And then we have some of the other like higher fae with Kieran and some of the other people that come in later on in the series that we get to see as well. I think where the series does stumble is in its villains though. There are a number of characters that I guess you could describe as villains, but overall throughout the series they aren't super fleshed out. One gets fleshed out later but it's almost like too little too late in my opinion and they just always seem like they aren't too much of a danger to anyone which is kind of amazing because some of these characters are like traditional characters that you've heard about within the like fey lore and stuff if you're at all familiar with fey lore so a few of these characters I'm like they should be doing way more damage than they're doing and just they are talked about a lot in a way of being like they're so fearsome they're so scary but we aren't quite shown that a ton there's um a lot of like past tense stuff that's happening in later books because we skip through some time things and we don't necessarily follow every single piece of that. So we don't get to see as much of these villains being villains as I thought we would. So as far as like the big bad throughout the series, I couldn't necessarily tell you who exactly the big bad is. Maybe the character that gets eventually fleshed out in the end, but overall that character isn't even necessarily seen as the biggest bad of the series. So it's, it's very kind of convoluted with that, which I think made this worse for me than I was expecting because I was expecting these villains to be much more of a problem than they ended up being plot wise. As far as the relationship that starts developing and you get this immediately within the first book, I just won't tell you how far it progresses or anything, but between Eliana and Kieran, that was also something that I thought I was really going to be into. A lot of people have talked about how this series is really good for people who like Akatar and that it's better than Akatar and the angst is better than Akatar. and I can see how some people would really dig this relationship, but for me it didn't feel angsty enough for me because I never felt like there was any threat of them not eventually working it out. Again, if I was right or wrong, I'm not really gonna go there, but for me, angst, I really have to kind of be like, I don't know, and for them, I kind of felt like throughout the story, like, well, I think 
this is just gonna work out and I think it's because of the way that it was written so let me kind of talk about the plot a bit. So like I mentioned before this is very fun and easy to read because it is very action heavy. A lot of like little fight scenes there's a lot of different like fey creatures there's things they're fighting there's magic blah blah, blah. and with that not a ton is explain world building magic wise. There's some magic things that happened that I was like, I didn't even know you guys could do that. Like, we're not gonna go into any of that. So if you don't care about fleshed out magic systems, you probably won't care that much. I don't necessarily need that, but there were so many different inconsistencies and I was like, I don't really know how like the magic works here, but okay. That also left some of the character things not fully developed either because we were just constantly jumping from like plot thing to plot thing and like this action thing and this action thing and they're constantly in danger and da 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 da. And that's why I was always like, okay, well they're constantly in danger and then they constantly get out of it. <laughs> so it never left me feeling like they weren't gonna get out of it. And that's why again, the relationships never really felt in danger. People didn't really feel in danger ever, even though we're told they constantly are and the action, you know, they're constantly in fights and stuff, but it moves so quick that they're never stuck in it, which is kind of nice for like flow and stuff and getting through a book really fast, but also left me feeling like there's really no threat here. So overall this series was decent for a Faye series, I think. I didn't hate it, but I do believe it's gonna be very forgettable for me. What will stick out is if anyone ever wants a Faye series, I will point them towards this. If they like historical, point them towards this, that kind of thing. If you want Buffy feels with Faye, this, but it was ultimately for me like a three star series the whole way through, I'm pretty sure. The first book I might have given like a 3.5, second book is definitely a 3, and third book I think is also a 3, maybe like 2.75 again because there's some things that I didn't necessarily think were as fleshed out, but overall in my feels this just whole thing sits as one giant story and it's a 3 star story for me. So comment down below, let me know your thoughts on the Falconer series. Thank you all for watching and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye!